Hello everybody! In this clip, we construct out of a given toric variety a lattice frame. Let me sketch the idea of this construction. The key is to look to one parameter subgroups, that means homomorphisms lambda from C star to the acting torus T, and to ask for possible limit points in the following sense. Apply lambda of t to the base point x naught of x, and then ask what happens if the parameter t tends to zero. Geometrically, the situation looks as follows. Here's our toric variety x. We have the base point, and the torus orbit through the base point. This is almost all of x. Besides the torus orbit through the base point, we have the boundary, which is a closed set of lower dimension. Now, if we take such a one-parameter subgroup and start at our base point and then let t tend to zero, that means in general that we approach the boundary of the torus and, if we are lucky, end up with a limit point sitting in the boundary of the torus. Now, it is an important fact that there are only finitely many such limit points for a toric variety. That means that of infinitely many one-parameter subgroups are attracted by a finite number of points. It turns out that there will be points attracting only a few lambda, there will be points attracting a lot of them. Now let us look at such point attracting a lot of uh, one-parameter subgroups. That means that it is a common limit of a lot of one-parameter subgroups. Those all converge to our x. If you want to make a discrete picture out of this, we pass to the derivative of the one parameter subgroup evaluated at the point one. That means we look at the direction at the starting point x0. Now, if we look at all directions of the one parameter, group ending up in this limit point x, then we observe that all these directions, they lie inside an open cone. And if we pass to the closure of this cone, then we obtain a lattice cone. And the observation is that in the case of a normal Toric variety, all these lattice cones fit together to a lattice cone. Let us test this idea in a concrete example. Consider the projective plane with its standard toric structure. In this situation, we have the two torus and the one parameter subgroups of the two torus are of the following form. Take vector v equal v1, v2 from z2. Then the associated one parameter subgroup lambda v of t is t to the v1, t to the v2. Now we have to care about the limits of these one parameter subgroups. That means limit t tends to zero, lambda of t applied to the base point one, one, one. And by the definition of the action of t2, lambda of t times one, one, one is 1, t to the v1, t to the v2. And now we have to study what happens if t tends to 0. Here's a concrete case. For instance, if v1, v2 both are positive, then if t tends to 0, this gets small and as a limit, we obtain the point with the homogeneous coordinates 1, 0, 0. 
This happens for all lambda v, where the two entries are positive. Now, remember, we have to pass to the derivatives of these one parameter subgroups. What does it mean in our case? The derivative of such a lambda v at point one. This gives us just back the vector v1, v2. So, if we draw all the lambda v having this as a limit point into a picture, we get these lattice vectors in v2. The open cone generated by all of them is the open quadrant. And if we pass to the closure, we end up with sigma of x being the quadrant. Let us have a quick look at all possible limit points and their associated cones for the toric variety P2. One limit point we have already seen, 1, 0, 0, is associated cone generated uh, by the canonical basis vectors E1 and E2. There are two more limit points attracting a lot of one parameter groups. This is 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 1. And the corresponding cones are of dimension 2, sigma 1 and sigma 2. There are three points attracting some, but not so many one parameter subgroups. These are 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. The associated cones are of dimension 1. It is row 1, row 2, and row 0. And finally, there is one limit point attracting only one one parameter subgroup. This is 1, 1, 1, which only attracts the trigger one parameter subgroup. Okay, let us get a little more formal. Here is the definition of a one-parameter subgroup of a torus T. This is a homomorphism from C star to T of algebraic groups. As the latter means it is a group homomorphism and it is a morphism of algebraic varieties both together. The set of all one-parameter subgroups of a given torus T is a lattice. How we define the lattice structure, we need to say what is the sum of two one-parameter subgroups, lambda 1 and lambda 2. This is defined point-wise, lambda 1 plus lambda 2, evaluated at an element t, should be lambda 1 of t multiplied with lambda 2 of t in the torus. In order to see that this is indeed a lattice structure, not just a group structure. Remember that the torus is an algebraic group isomorphic to some standard torus. And in the case of the standard torus Tn, uh, we can perfectly say what happens. In this case, we have isomorphisms being inverse to each other, namely from the lattice Zn to lambda of t, the one parameter subgroups of the standard torus, sending a vector v to the one parameter subgroup lambda v, which in turn sends t to t to the 1 up to t to the n. And the inverse homomorphism just takes a given lambda, takes a derivative and evaluates it at the point 1. We say that a one parameter subgroup lambda of a torus t converges in a toric variety x t x naught if the map from c star to x divided by sending t to lambda of t applied to the base point x naught. If this map extends to a morphism lambda bar from c to x. In this case, the limit point of lambda in x 
is defined just to be the value of that extension in the point zero. So we obtain a point in X. The convergency cone of the limit point X of a one parameter sum group lambda is defined as follows. We look at all one parameter subgroups lambda prime of T, which also have our X as a limit, and then look at the cone generated by them. That means all finite non-negative linear combinations over such one parameter subgroups. We have already seen that in general this will give us an open cone. So we take this cone and pass to its closure. And then we obtain, obtain a subset living in the rational vector space associated with the lattice of one parameter subgroups of our torus T. We come to the theorem about toric varieties and lattice fans. Consider a normal toric variety x t x naught, where normal just means that our variety x has at most normal singularities. Then the set capital sigma of x consisting of all convergency cones uh, of the limit points we can find in x. This set is a fan in the lattice of one parameter subgroups. So this means in particular that these convergency cones are convex polyhedral cones in our sense and they fit together as they should do in a fan. One remark, if we have an affine toric variety, then there is always a unique closed torus orbit inside this affine variety X. And for any point small x of this closed orbit, we can say the following. The fan of convergency cones of the affine toric variety X consists just of the faces of the convergency cone of this point x with a closed orbit. Observe that I did assume nothing about normality here. In fact, this is true without normality. The crucial point in the proof of this theorem is to cover our x by invariant, open, affine, sub varieties. So X, if it is normal, is a union of affine toric varieties. This is a consequence of an important theorem of Sumiro. Once we know this, uh, a good part of the work is reduced to the affine case. See you in the next unit.